thank you, Sari, and thank you, Thomas, uh, for holding this very interesting uh, meeting. Uh, when uh, we ask us who protests, uh, who benefits from the popular uprising broke out in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Yemen, Syria, Bahrain, and other countries that are contaminating uh, the southern and eastern Mediterranean? The answer is clear. The main beneficiaries are the Islamic fundamentalists affiliated to the international movement of the Muslim Brothers, present with different acronyms in different countries and who have identified in Erdogan Turkey the political reference to point out and, if necessary, a model of democracy to which aspire to. Everywhere the Muslim Brothers have been fully legitimized and set themselves up as guarantees of stability and security of the state. Sharing power with the military, they shoot to oust the popular <laughs> uprising as, them, as managers of economic decay and immorality of the institution. What happened did not happen by accident. If millions of people unite, occupy the street, and demonstrate against the regime, it's because there is a leader, a puppeteer, or a movement that inspires them and maneuvers them. In this specific case, it is a puppeteer, and the puppet master is us, the Western people. Obama, Sarkozy, and Cameron have promoted a strategy for the Muslim Brothers coming to power in order to have in return the repression of Islamic jihadist terrorism, of which Al-Qaeda by Bin Laden is the chief representative. Many are behind the suicide decision of the West. United States are the first most indebted country in the world, with a public debt equivalent to 500,476 billion dollars, equivalent to about 100% of gross domestic product. A main influence of the growth of public debt is a military cost that from 2001 to 2011 was of $6,191 billion, with a growth rate of about 83%. There have been a direct relationship between the fight against, against Islamic globalized terrorism and the deterioration of public debt. The sudden decision to declare wars, war first to the Taliban regime in Afghanistan, a stronghold of Al-Qaeda of Bin Laden in 2001, and then to Iraq in 2003, the undisputed sponsor of Islamic terrorism have boosted the war cost to the point of becoming dizzy and uncontrollable. If in 1989, year in which the collapse of the Berlin Wall started the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the Communist bloc, the US military budget was 526 billion dollars, since that then it, it continued its decrease until 375 billion of dollars in the year 2000. <coughs> it is only in 2001 that starts to climb to over seven, 710 billion dollars in 2011. This is why today the reduction of military budget has become the priority for the, for the US administration. In order to do so, the United States 
have chosen to agree with the Muslim brothers to fight Bin Laden and the jihadists. In return, they agreed to legitimize them as democratical political forces and allow them to take power wherever it becomes possible. <coughs> it is clear that the so-called Arab Spring is worsening the reality of Israel. Even the two moderate countries that keep diplomatic relations with Israel, Turkey and Egypt, have actually broken off their relations. The past September 2, Erdogan expelled the Israeli ambassador and broke all relations with Israel to Netanyahu's refu refusal of offering an official apology for the killing of nine Turkish pro-Hamas activi activists that on May 31, 2010, on the ship Marmara, attempted to bring the naval blockade in order to arrive in Gaza. Last September 10 in Cairo, thousands of protesters attacked and sacked the Israeli embassy in Cairo, hosting the Egyptian flag instead of the one with the Star of David, <coughs> forcing the ambassador and diplomats to flee. The Egyptian army itself, supported by Islamic extremists, has violently suppressed protest demonstration of young Christians on October 9 in front of the headquarters of the National Federation. These events show the alliance that has been established within the military that are delivered to get rid of President Mubarak and Islamic radicals belonging to Muslim Brothers and Salafist movements. The sacrificial victims of the partnership between, between the military and the Islamists are the local Christians and Israel, which act as highly efficient relief bulbs of popular anger that leads on our skin the rapid deterioration of economic condition and security. In the 7th century, Christian represented the 99% of the population of the southern and eastern Mediterranean. They are now an endangered minority. Since 1945, about 10 million Christians have left those lands. In the last six months in Egypt, about 93,000 Christians have fled, mainly to the United States. If the, local, if the total of civilian killers so far fallen into Syria, Yemen, Egypt, Tunisia, and elsewhere in Arab countries is now greater than the total killed in all wars against Israel, Arab, shoot out from 1948 onwards. This is due to the fact that it is not about exclusively of the violent repression of peaceful demonstration promoted by civilian population. The trust is that this bloodbath has been preordinated and designed by the Muslim brothers who discredited the military regime in power in order to force the United States and the European Union, in particular, to isolate them and encourage the fall of the, uh, the regime in power. I would add, horrified, that the Muslim brothers are encouraging this massacre with the blessing of the West. In conclusion, it was not uh, at all an uprising for democracy and freedom, as the mass media communication and some ideological, politically, namely, and demagogically wanted to make us believe, but rather a real deception of the so-called Arab Spring. The fundamental mistake that we have committed in the West is to imagine the next automatically and uncritically in our image and
and similarity. We therefore thought that if we seek in rational terms and adhere to non-negotiable values, such as the sanctity of life, the centrality of human dignity, and the inviolability of freedom of choice, our neighbors on the other shores are, Mediter are Mediterranean share the same cultural heritage and ideas. The trust is that Muslims think in Quran terms and adhere to an ideology that leads them to see themselves as militants of a holy war aiming to the of aiming to in the impose of Islam throughout the world, where the four life, dignity, and freedom are variable dependent and a way to achieve this goal where the person is subject to the community, where you will re reach peace only when Islam will prevail and trusses are contemplated merely as a tactical expedient to curb the enemy while waiting to defeat, the, to defeat him. Muslims follow, literally, the dictate of the Quran that orders them to fight until the victory of Islam, as well as they have a supreme representative Muhammad, who in 628, outside Medina, decapitated with his own hands about 800 Jews of the tribe of Bani Quraysa, and in the same year signed in Hudaybiyah the Hudna, a truce with, with the Meccan enemies when he was in a position of, of inferiority, violating it in January of 630, once consolidated his day forces with the occupation of Mecca. We people of the West world, we are self-deceiving by focusing on a few frames of film in the popular appraising, emphasizing the presence of young people who speak our languages and feel part of the informatic globalization surfing the internet and communicating through Facebook and Twitter. It's clear that these young people are there and we must help them, but in the knowledge that they represent a minority. But above all, our leaders have, have deceived us by supporting the Muslim Brothers movement and promoting Erdogan's target hegemony, as hegemonic power in the region. Also, is a reality essentially hostile to our non-negotiable values that despise our secular and liberal civilization with Jewish Christian roots which uses democracy as a tool to impose Islamic dictatorship. Well, it is time to recover the use of reason and to face the reality of the facts, to rediscover the love of ourselves and to take measures for the common good in order to preserve our humanity and to prevent the suicide of our civilization. Thank you for your attention, and, apolo and I apologize for my poor English, and I wish you, all you to become protagonists of trust and freedom, witness of faith and reason, and builders of a civilization of non-negotiable values and the certainty of views. Thank you.
uh, at least at one occasion, uh, where you had in-depth talks, I believe, with uh, people central to, to, to the development.